Hello and welcome. My name is Sara and I'm a film programmer at Film East. And today I'm joined by my fellow programmers, Shelby Cook, Neve Brooke and Alex Smith to discuss the jukebox musical, Mamma Mia. This segment is a part of Film East, a Norwich-based young film programmers group supported by Real Connections and Film Hub South East. Uh, so Mamma Mia started off as a stage show and the concept is pretty simple. It's a jukebox musical and its entire plot is arranged around the hit songs of the musical group ABBA. The film follows Sophie, who finds her mother's diary, and she finds three potential men who could be her father. And so she decides to invite them all to her wedding on a Greek island where her mother owns a hotel. And the adventures ensue from there. And so to give you a bit of background, the stage production was actually one of the first times that three women collaborated in a theatre as a creative team. And it was a huge commercial success and has been later adapted to the film starring Meryl Streep as Donna and has grossed at 69 million in its first year. And actually a little fun fact for everyone that uh, it was one of the first few films in 2008. It was directed by Lydia Lloyd and it ha mainly had like a female crew as well. And I remember Colin Firth, Pierce Brosnan and Stellan Skarsgård all saying that they felt somewhat intimidated by having an all female go because at 2008 that wasn't pretty common. So I think that's such an amazing fact about such a female led film. Yeah, I mean, it's so interesting. I think it really, really shows um, in the like final product of the film because it's just so female heavy and it's actually one of the points that we want to talk about. It's uh, kind of the representation of middle-aged women in film because I think that uh, Mamma Mia has a lot of bad rep uh, and sometimes being, you know, too joyous and cheesy and is the kind of film that your mum goes to see with her friends after they've had a couple of cocktails. But I think the fact that Mamma Mia is this fun and joyous film that centers mainly around these three middle-aged women is quite radical because they're like literally having the time of their life and they're like being silly and they're like dancing and singing and they all have their own ident identities uh, that go beyond what we're used to seeing on screen, especially with older women. Yeah, I definitely, it is definitely something that you don't see very often in film or on screen at all. Uh, most of the time when you have films or anything that have middle-aged women, a lot of times they're just moms and they just have their identity as just being a mom. Um, so what's great about Mamma Mia is that the whole story revolves around the daughter, but the whole, you know, essence of it is very much about um, Donna and her journey as a woman and to kind of re reminding the daughter that she was a young adult at one time and she did have this life and she's just not a mom. Um, you definitely see something like that in films like Sex in the City, where it is very much just all middle-aged women, which again, a film like that gets a bad rep because it's just, oh, it's just middle-aged women flancing about doing whatever it is that, you know, middle-aged women do. They drink drinks with their friends. Um, but it does have very much a soul to it. It has an essence and it, it really is, like you said, they have an identity. They're just not moms. They're just not these very much placeholders of people. Yeah, I think it, you know, takes like societal stereotypes of what we think a woman should be at a certain age and it like completely turns it on its head. And it's just like, well, here you have these different women who all have completely different directions, have taken different directions in life. But they all seem really fulfilled and they all seem like really happy and they're also flawed, but there's a lot of stuff that's portrayed just in this one film of these characters that I just haven't seen anywhere else. So I think that's so good. I, I adore Mamma Mia. It is one of those films that you can put on at any time in whatever situation and you'll just love it. I think the characters are so unusual and like you say, like they just subvert so many expectations, but I do kind of agree with some of the criticisms that sometimes Mamma Mia can be like some of the directional choices and Pierce Brosnan singing, like there are some <laughs> points that I do agree with, that it is a bit cheesy, but I think because of how strong the characters are, people just overlook that. Like we're all film people and we adore this film. So the characters are that strong that you can overlook some interesting choices and just adore it. But I also think that's what's great about it is it's yeah. just, fun movie and like you know not you know a lot of the times you get stuck especially with representation of women a lot of times that you feel like a movie has to be very serious and you have to really you know represent women and you know show them all their their layers and be very serious and you know a lot of the times there's how women are treated on in film is a lot of times it's about their abuse and their 
mistreatment in life. And then this film is just very much just, you know, Donna just runs her hotel on a Greek island. You're just like, you know, that's fun. Like, you know, she has a and great she's just life. Loving life. Yeah, and it's like you said, Sarah, she's just happy. And like, that's great. And that's, that's what makes it so, such a beautiful film. Absolutely. And I think, you know, especially if you think about the sequel as well, like you wouldn't be able to pull that kind of thing off without having Donna there as such a like powerful and just like happy character. And in, in both films, the character of Donna is just is so strong and she's, you know, been through stuff in life, but they don't focus on that. They just focus on like a lot of the really fun bits. And there's just so many scenes with them being silly with all of the like costumes and and they're dancing around the island. It's just so beautiful to see that. It's really liberating, um, especially going back to what you said, Shelby, how, about how with a lot of middle-aged women, when they're represented on screen, it feels very heavy and serious. And so seeing these women just being silly and really not caring is so enjoyable. And it, it, I feel like it gives these female audiences at any age this chance to turn around and go, yeah, like old age can be fun. Like I don't have to feel restricted by these represent representations I usually see. And it, it just reminds you that, you know, just because you're older now doesn't mean that you're not, you don't have a personality anymore. Like if you didn't yeah. lose your personality somewhere along the way, like you're just boring now, you know, you can still have fun. You can still feel like a young person and you can still just live your life to the best that you want yeah, to live. I think you like cover some quite like controversial topics sometimes as well, because I think especially in media, women have to be portrayed as beautiful but naturally beautiful and then you have the character of Tanya who's you know it's very overtly stated that she's had plastic surgery and she's divorced and she's still very much um, a, a desirable woman and she's portrayed as that in the film and I think it's really interesting to show that you know she quote unquote failed at natural beauty but like that doesn't matter and you don't have to see you know kind of breaking the uh, what's the word barriers of that yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. What I also love about Tanya is that she just owns it. Like for a lot of films, if a woman is in charge of sort of her femininity, they can be punished and be seen as cocky. And even kind of in wider society, that can be the case. So I love that in, especially as does the mo your mother know, she is so confident in who she is. She's not penalised and everyone accepts her for that, which is so rare for a woman in her like 50s, especially. So I think, no, they did such an amazing job with Tanya. I think it's, in, it's incredible to see three really extremely different representations of paths women can go down. Because I feel like a lot of the time it's, if you're a woman and you don't have a career and a family and a husband and you're divorced and all these other very realistic things happen to you, you're not the superwoman, then you're seen as a failure. But these women are just happy. And although there's been children out of wedlock, there's been no children, there's been divorce. We don't see them as anything less than the happy, cheerful people they are. Yeah, you know? I completely agree. It allows you to embrace not following the traditional path in life. Because a lot of times the traditional path for a woman is you get married by 25, have kids, have your, you know, your two kids, your boy and your girl, and you just become like a housewife. And, you know, it does allow you to embrace and say, you know, it's okay to not have to be that person or to not even want to be that person. Yeah, and I think being portrayed as someone, you know, women who a uh, have child outside of the marriage and are single mothers bringing up the children can be shown. I mean, of course, you can portray the struggles and stuff, but I love that in this film, she loves Sophie. She has like the best relationship with Sophie that she could have, um, and she also, you know, runs her own business. She's not she's devoted to her child, but she has a life of her own and she has her friends and she very much has a character outside of being a mother, and that's really prevalent in it. I also think the way they characterise Sophie, because they've not characterised Sophie as like resenting her mother for not having a father in her life. She doesn't like, but there's always that need to have like a, a mother figure and a father figure. And obviously because Sophie hasn't grown up with that, she longs to meet her biological father. And it's never like, oh, you did this to me. It's always like, but I'd just like to have one now. It's never like a damning view on Donna. And I think it's really, really well handled. Yeah, I think that really nicely brings us to kind of the second... Uh, point of our discussion which is reimagining the family and how the film does this so well and so like as we've already mentioned there's the really beautiful mother-daughter relationship and the portrayal of being mothered and the fact that you don't always need a father figure in your life to you know be a decent person um, 
and yeah, how this is handled by enough throughout the film, but also just more generally about how they don't, you know, she, Sophie at the beginning of the film is searching for, for her dad and it's what she thinks and that she needs. Like she quotes, oh, um, I, I need to find my missing piece. And by the end of that, it kind of completely changes the, the idea of that by just being like, well, I have three dads and that's fine. And it's like you said as well, it doesn't, the film never blames Donna for not having, you know, it never says you're a bad person for not following the nuclear family, for not, you know, having a dad figure. And you can tell from even just the beginning that um, she grew up at being very loved and very, yeah. she, you know, you can tell that she's fulfilled and that's just something that she's interested in finding her dad, but it's not something that, you know, she defines her life around. And I think it's so interesting because the entire story revolves around finding the dad and it's all about the dad. But the essence of the story is very much, you know, it's about that female experience of, you know, they never blame Donna for not bringing the, the male into the family. She, you know, you, can never, you can't tell that she's, no one's defected in a way because there wasn't a male around. Yeah, absolutely. And I also really love the fact that the, the men are not territorial uh, and they all really accept it. They're not fighting over who's got to be the dad and I want to, you know, I want to test to see if I'm the real dad. They all kind of just accept it and they accept that they're with this new version of a family and they're all really devoted to Sophie, which is just so nice to see. It really challenges the idea of toxic masculinity because none yeah. of the men are very, you know, oh, I'm the big guy coming in, like, this is my daughter, I'm going to test. You know, they're all just like, oh yeah, cool, yeah. Like, you know, they're just all accepted. Even, you know, um, Sophie's um, husband, you know, even he's just like, he's very supportive of her and, it never at any point you never feel like the men are oppressing over the women that they feel like they have to be the dominant figure yeah. there's also a really interesting point there is that sophie's relationship with sky sophie obviously i don't know how but she's quite a traditional person being donna's daughter i don't know where that came from in the genes but she wants to get married that's the whole plot it's like waiting for the wedding and then she realizes like I don't need to be married to you in order to be with you. And they have this big realization that they're rushing and that they can spend their life together. And Sky's so accepting of that and that he just wants her to be happy. And I think it's such an interesting view that, yeah, you sort of society expects you to get married, but you don't have to. You can just be who you want with whoever you want. It's a really lovely sort of ending for the film. Oh, like Sophie in the film proposes to Sky, which is already like a bit. Yeah. And then in the sequel, um, spoilers, but. Uh, she actually like breaks up with Sky, and that's kind of seen. You know, it's not a really huge deal, and her dad still come there and support her for when she puts the event on in honor of Donna. And it's just really nice, and it shows life in a really realistic way, even though it's still this cheesy jukebox musical, and it's still just so fun. It very much subverts the stereotypes that we're used to seeing in media and it's just so like like we said earlier it's just such a silly movie and it's just such a fun movie but you you know the more you think about it you're like wow it really does challenge our expectations of what we think gender should be and how gender should be represented I mean even just you know the woman proposing is just oh it's so radical it's so radical having a child out of wedlock and you know being happy about it you know not feeling like you are you failed at life because you didn't have children or you failed at life because you don't have the best career or you, you don't have a uh, you know, husband by your side. And it's just really, for such a silly film and for a film that is so mainstream and so pop culture, to have those ideas that sort of really just are liberating and empowering to the female identity is really spectacular. Really, really wonderfully done. Do you guys have a favorite? out of the like female characters just out julie walters has to be rosie <laughs> she's i just so fun. we had like a school disco and i went i was seven years old and i borrowed one of my mum's bras from the dancing queen <laughs> sequence and i went with my mum's bra over my shirt and i was like obsessed with rosie it was amazing yes. <laughs> She owns it, like, <laughs> two years, and you're like, yeah, <laughs> I'll do that. <laughs> I adore seeing her confidence. It, it fills yeah. me with, like, such, I feel like I can walk out of the house naked and just be like, yeah, look at you're me. Right. <laughs> what about it? 
Yeah, they're all just so great in like so many ways. I just love the fact that Rosie is just such a party animal. Um, and she's also shown to like really pine after Bill. And it's like, she's not embarrassed by it. She's like, I'm going, I'm going to get Bill. And she don't care. <laughs> yeah, she's like, what about it? This is who I am and this is what I'm going to do. <laughs> yeah. I think we've all been there. We can all relate to that. <laughs> <laughs> At least I have been. <laughs> Okay, so that concludes our discussion for today. We hope you have enjoyed our brief look into the topic. And if you're interested in learning more about Mamma Mia or female representation in the film industry, you can visit our website to read our article on Mamma Mia, as well as other articles related to the topic. If you're interested in contributing to our film and television blog, visit film-east.com forward slash submissions for more information on how you can contribute. If you'd like to learn more about the Film East and the Young Film Programmers, you can visit our website film-east.com or follow us on social media, that is Film East on Facebook and Films underscore East on Twitter and Instagram. Again, we're Film East, a Norwich-based young film programming group. We're supported by Real Connections and a part of Film Hub South East and the BFI Fan Network.